Happening right now, a celestial double header. The longest lunar eclipse of the century is visible throughout the Eastern Hemisphere. And if that's not enough to excite your inner space geek, we know you have one. Mars is also the closest it's been to the Earth in 15 years. Unfortunately, we can't see either event here in North America because the sun is out. But people all over Africa and Asia are getting a spectacular show. Joining me now to talk about the show is Elizabeth Howell. She is a space journalist. She's joining me from Ottawa, Canada. Elizabeth, first off, I'm so sorry. Are you upset to be missing this, being in North America? I am totally upset because it's always an amazing view to see the moon turn blood red just like this but thankfully it happens fairly frequently it's not like a solar eclipse where it's like once in a lifetime so you'll have plenty of opportunities to watch it in the next year or two. Oh really so uh, us here in North America when when is the next chance we'll get? Actually we're going to have one in uh, January so uh, just watch out for that there'll be some alerts uh, ahead of time for it and you don't need any special equipment just your eyes you don't have to worry about uh, looking at it for a long time look as long as you like it's uh, always fun. Woohoo! We're setting our calendars for sure. Now, Elizabeth, what exactly is happening between the Earth, Moon, and Sun here? Well, if you can picture my head here as the Earth, we got the Sun here on one side and we got the Moon on the other side. So the Earth is essentially blocking all of this light from the Sun all the way to the Moon. So then what happens is that the light from the sun actually filters a little bit through the atmosphere. So if you picture my hair here as the atmosphere, and it's that uh, filtering that's turning the moon a little bit red. It's all of the sunsets and sunrises all around the world moving onto the moon's surface, which is just amazing. So that filtering is what makes it red. Why does it not go dark altogether? Because there is still a little bit of light that gets filtered through? That's exactly it. The moon is a little bit smaller than the Earth, and so we have all of this light shining through the Earth's atmosphere and filtering onto the moon's surface. Now, this one is the longest lunar eclipse of the century so far. Why is that? Well, um, if you think about those supermoons that you hear about every so often when the moon is really close to the Earth, um, that's what's happening right now. The moon happens to be particularly close, which means that the shadow is a little bit bigger for the, uh, the moon to move through. And uh, that's why it's a little bit longer. It's because the moon's closer and it's moving through more of the shadow than usual. And Mars is also the closest it's been to the Earth in 15 years. Why does that distance vary? How far is Mars usually from the Earth and how far is it now? I don't have those uh, numbers right offhand, but I can tell you that um, Mars tends to bury in its orbit around the sun because it's not a complete circle. It's not a perfect circle. So here's the sun. Here's my fist being the sun. And the Mars is circling around. And then we also have Earth, which is circling a little bit closer than Mars. And what happens is over time, those two planets, they don't have completely circular orbits. And so if you picture them as kind of like ovals, sometimes those ovals are a little bit closer to each other than they are at other times. And so uh, at that point, when the, uh, the two areas, the two planets, I should say, are close to each other, it makes Mars look a little bit bigger in the sky. It's just simple geometry. It's like looking at something uh, on the horizon that's a bit closer. Elizabeth Howell, thank you so much for uh, playing along with us and our inner space geek over here at CVSN. Thank you so much. No problem at all.